How long you stay? Until nine. What? Until nine of November. Oh, that's good. The very nice office next to Long Po together. So, how is Sunny? Oh, um, okay. okay. Busy people. <laughs> what? Uh, like it's for normal working, working and being very busy. Yeah. Working, working, working. Time. One. Oh. And then working again. And then dying again, and then working again, and then dying again. Anyway, so how, how, how many people are in the Zoom session? Zoom, there's 17, 17 people. 17, okay. Yeah. I, I hope every one of you is practicing and practicing and practicing as, as much as you can, yeah? And Sunny, how many hours you do a day? 20 minutes, huh? Uh, sometimes less, less than that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, when I was working, yeah? Hmm? And you, you don't have a family, you don't have, yeah? You don't have a girlfriend, you know? <clears throat> When I was working, I did one hour before I went to work, one hour when I, you know, when I came home from work, yeah, and then one hour, you know, before I went to bed. And on the weekends, when I didn't have work, you know, I did six hours. Huh? Yeah, I mean, that's how you progress, you know, even when you're, when, when, when you're still in, in the daily, you know, in the daily <coughs> occupation of working, yeah? <clears throat> Otherwise, I mean, you don't get a foothold, yeah? Otherwise, you're swayed around with your, with your thoughts, your memories, yeah, your ideas, and so on, yeah? And especially nowadays with this phone, you know, I mean, uh, if we don't even notice how much time you spend on the phone, you know, or on the computer, on the internet, yeah? Wasting away our precious time, that we could use, you know, to make uh, to to make the mind calm. And when the mind is calm, it is happy. Yeah. And don't you all look for happiness? Huh? <clears throat> what you after? Money? No, money that cannot buy happiness because happiness arises in the heart, not in the things that we buy or not in the things that we do. You have to understand that. You also have to understand, you know, last in my last talk, you know, in the evening talk, yeah, I mean, I was talking about sati, the importance of sati. Why is sati so important? Yeah? <clears throat> people, people might not understand or don't understand, you know, the importance of sati. Sati and panya, <clears throat> there are two weapons that can kill off the killers or so can get rid of the kilesa. <clears throat> and this leads us, yeah, when we use them, it can lead us to the to the stage of anagami. And then we need mahasati, mahapanya, yeah? so the great sati and the great wisdom yeah, to finish off a vicha. Yeah? Sati yeah, is not samadhi. Yeah? I mean, samadhi is samadhi, is concentration. Yeah? Sati is sati, is knowingness. It's the knowingness of the chitta. <clears throat> And you have to understand that. Yeah? If you use the wrong translation, like, you know, often in English it is translated as mindfulness, yeah? then the mind is full of one thing. It's good, you know, it's not bad, yeah? but it's not sati. Hmm? <clears throat> sati is mind emptiness. The mind is empty of any occupation. <clears throat> it still can concentrate on one, one object, yeah? that is concentration. Concentration and sati, yeah? or you can call it the knowingness of the heart, yeah? 
are two different things. Yeah? So when we train concentration or when we train samadhi, I mean we focus on the breath and then we develop the sati knowing how the breath is. Is the breath short? Is the breath long? Is it rough? Is it detailed? Is it, yeah? Is it quiet? Yeah? Whatever. Yeah? And the same with the Buddha. This knowingness we have to develop. Yeah? Most of the people only develop concentration, yeah? And then, you know, then the, the heart becomes calm, you know, and then they stay with the calmness, yeah? And nothing, you know, and the sati is not developed. Yeah? And if we don't develop sati, we cannot, we cannot finish off the kilesas, we cannot <coughs> erase the kilesas, no? Yeah? So this is, this is really, this is really important, yeah? <coughs> Sati and then Panya. Yeah? So Samadhi, yeah? the concentration concentrates on one object, you know, be it the breath, be it the Buddha, yeah? and Sati knows everything that is going on around the breath. Yeah? The quality of the breath, the depth of the breath, yeah? <clears throat> or, the, or the Buddha, yeah? is the Buddha fast or is the Buddha slow? Yeah? This is something that we have to develop. Yeah? And for, for most of us, you know, we are too lazy to develop it, you know, because we want to stay with the calm. Ah, oh, it's a nice, it's a nice, yeah. yeah. But then, then nothing happens, yeah, because we don't develop the setting, it's knowing this. <clears throat> I mean, for, for me, I understood really, I really understood, yeah. Before, you know, I mean, I also come from the West, you know, I was always also indoctrinated by the Western teachers and said this mindfulness, mindfulness, yes, 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 yeah. Until Lungta Mahabur taught us, you know, the person who has sati, yeah, at that moment he has sati, there are no kilesas coming in. This is something we have to understand. Yeah? If you are mindful, the kilesas are still coming in. Yeah? <clears throat> so it is actually this mind emptiness. It's this knowing nature of the citta. <clears throat> also, I gave, gave an example in the last talk about a person, you know, I mean, Lunta talked about a person he saw in the middle of a crossing, yeah? Very busy crossing, yeah? I mean, <clears throat> his, his truck, you know, his truck was full of things, you know, I mean, flipped over, you know, and then in the middle of the crossing with cars coming from all directions, I mean, he was sitting down, you know, on, on this crossing, you know, and, and slowly, you know, taking his things, you know, mindfully taking his things, you know, putting it back in the car, not being aware, yeah, not being aware of what is going on around him, not being aware how much he is in danger or how much other people are because of his behavior in danger. So he was, he had, you know, mindfulness, but he had no sati, he had no awareness of what is going on, situational awareness. Eh? So this is something, this is something you know, important, yeah? <clears throat> that we have to understand. Eh? We have to differentiate, you know, be between mindfulness, you know, and between sati. Eh? And we have to develop the sati to make it, together with panya, the weapon that can defeat the kilesa. Eh? Otherwise, we, it is impossible for us. Eh? <clears throat> we can be mindful of our kilesas, we can try not to give in, but you know, we will not be able to defeat it if we don't know, if we don't have this awareness of what is going on, what makes us tick, yeah? <clears throat> Why we do things, yeah? And what is the result of our doing? <clears throat> this, this is something that we have to, that we have to develop. And that's why I always, you know, that's why I always, you know, encourage the people, you know, in the evening, yeah, sunny, in the evening do daily reflection, yes? Huh? <laughs> Most people forget it, ah, yeah. The daily reflection, yeah. <clears throat> we start, you know, we start, you know, when we sit down, first we, we make ourselves calm, yeah? and then we start with, you know, the, the moment we woke up, yeah. What kind of thoughts did I have? What kind of, you know, what, what kind of memories came up? Yeah? And what did I do then? Yeah? Without judging the situation. This is very important because the moment judgment comes in, you know, it distorts our views. Yeah? We don't see, the chitta does not see what is really going on. Yeah? 
And that's the same thing. Then we did this, you know, why did we do this? You know, what did we do? And what was the results of our doing? So we go through the whole day, you know, step by step, as much as we can remember. If you can't remember one thing, you know, we just skip over. We don't think about it, yeah. <clears throat> uh, what was this? What came after that? Yeah, if you can't remember it within within 20 seconds, you know, go, go to the next thing that you can remember. And over time, if you do that daily, you know, it becomes very... Yeah? <clears throat> you see everything, yeah? And in the beginning, it might take an hour or one and a half hours, you know, to go through the day. And when you do it for a year or two years, you know, I mean, you know, you just sit down and then you see the whole film coming, you know? And then you see, yeah? And the important thing is not to judge, yeah? And that it shows us, you know, it shows us, yeah? <clears throat> it, also, it also develops, yeah? When we see, uh, oh, there, there was something going on, you know, I didn't catch it, why I was doing it, or why I was reacting, why I was speaking, why, yeah? Huh? Then, then we tell ourselves, okay, tomorrow I will have more awareness about, you know, what is going on. And it might take weeks or months, you know, until we, we get, you know, this awareness on this special occasion. And then we see what is going on. Yeah? I mean, you can do that in your daily life, there's no problem with it. Yeah? <clears throat> and it helps you, you know, I mean, to sort out all the, all the unnecessary things that you're doing. Yeah? I mean, you get rid and have much more time, you know, much more time for practice. <clears throat> and then you can deepen your sati. Yeah? I, I I had a I had a good I had an advantage you know when I first uh, stu uh, learned meditation yeah I had a good meditation teacher in Germany yeah I mean he was training in Mahasaya tradition you know actually with the Mahasaya and then you know for nine years he he was in Thailand before he came back to Germany to teach meditation yeah? and then one time you know we were actually quite good friends yeah? one time you know we sat down on, on a doing a meditation course, and then he said, yeah, I mean, just, just listen, just see. Huh? I said, what? Listen? Yeah, I, I listen. No! Huh? Listen without, you know, without any assumptions. Uh, how do you do that? Because, you know, you listen and instantly your assumptions come up. Hmm? Huh? Yeah, listen, just listen or see, you know, without making any assumption about what you hear and what you see. Yeah? <clears throat> it took me, yeah, I mean, that was his instruction. It took me a year until I understood, you know, and a year later I came to see him and said, okay, now I understand what you mean. Yeah? Because when you really listen, <clears throat> you will notice that the mind does not listen. The first thing that listens to is the chitta. So whenever you hear something, it first comes into the chitta, and then the mind processes it, yeah? The process is the same sound, yeah? The chitta doesn't process anything, yeah? The mind processes it, and then it, it clarifies it, or, or <coughs> says it is this or it is that. Yeah, it, 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 you know, a dog, you know, a dog is barking, or this is this sound, or that is that sound, or that is that sound, yeah? And it's the same with C. Yeah? <clears throat> so, try it out, yeah, I mean, it is not easy, yeah, I mean, it took me a year, you know, until I could do that, yeah, but then you can also listen, you can listen to, you can listen to other people, yeah, you don't, you don't process what they say, yeah, or especially if it is a teacher, I mean, you don't even need to process what he's saying, you know, because your heart receives it and receives it and receives it and stores it, yeah, it knows it, yeah. <clears throat> this is this is the knowing nature of the you know, of the chitta that we have to develop, you know? and it is important. You know? As I said in the beginning, you know, if you don't have sati, you know? <clears throat> if you don't can, you know, we we have to, you know, when we develop wisdom, you know? we have to focus on one point. You know? I mean, be it the whole body or be it part of the body. So we focus there and then develop the sati, the knowingness about what is going on at this specific location. Just like when we concentrate on the breath, knowing what is going on, on you know, with, with the breath. Yeah? And then Panya comes in and asks the question, and asks the right question. Yeah? You can ask the question, you know, I mean, when you are the whole body, show me, show me how I died. Yeah? And then sooner or later it will show you 
one of the deaths, you know, or many of the deaths that you have gone through in your previous life, yeah? You see it. Huh? Or show me this, yeah? show me the inside, yeah? What is happening, you know, when I, when I burn up the body or when, when, the, when the body dies? Well, what is happening? You show me this. You know, when the body dies, you know, and then it shows you. Yeah? But you have to ask the question in order to develop yeah, wisdom. But if you cannot concentrate on this object, yeah, and if you don't have the awareness that is with the object, yeah, I mean, then you will have no result. Okay? A little bit understood? Hmm? Okay, now you can ask your questions if you have any. Thank you. Uh, yes, so anyone have questions? You want to really respond? Ah, hello? Yeah. Ah. Washington, Seattle. Good morning. Yes, Bhakti. Good morning. Well, it's really dark here still. <laughs> Yeah, it will get dark. I'm here. <laughs> okay, so what is your question? I hope everything is auspicious for you and everybody at Master. Thank you very much for for these thoughts. And in regards to what you were just saying about the Chita, he's the the one who hears first. And then the mind, the, the mind starts to process it. Plant perspective and you know pro proliferating again. Yeah. So is, is that the, the mano? But when you say the mind, is mano. So versus chitta. And it happens within the chitta as well. Yeah. I mean, it it happens in our case. It happens in the brain. Yeah. Because it's a function, you know, it's it's our computer. The brain is our computer that does all this association, yeah. <clears throat> but we train, yeah, we train this computer, you know, we train the brain, you know, to do this association. That's what you do in the first 15 or 16 years of your life. Don't you? Yeah. And your mother says, this is a tree, and then, yeah, and that is a tree, and that is a flower, and this is bread, you know, you can eat it. This is dangerous, this is, you know, huh? So you train that, you know, and it is in the mind, you know, I, I mean in our brain, yeah, this association. So we learn it, yeah. <clears throat> but the chitta itself knows it, yeah. But we never listen to the chitta, we always listen to our mind, yeah. What he says, you know, what this is, what that is, you know, what we see and what, what, what yeah. Yeah, but, but what I'm trying to uh, establish is that if the, when you say the, when we hear the mind, is that what they call it, Pali, Mano? Mano is more a conceit, yeah. That's what, what my understanding is, huh? Mana, conceit. Mano, 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 mano. Mano is mind. Okay, mano. mana is conceit and mano is mind. Yeah. I so the question, don't ask me about Pali. Yeah. I mano versus no, chitta. But, He's asking what is the difference between mano, which they translate as mind, and what you say chitta. <laughs> I mean, mano is an aspect of the chitta. Just like sati is an aspect of the chitta. Just like panya is an aspect of the chitta. Greed and hatred is an aspect of the chitta. You can see, yeah, you can see the chitta as a diamond with lots of facets, yeah. And one of the facets is greed, another facet is hate, yeah, and another another facet, you know, is this ma is this conceit, and the other thing is, you know, ma it has a lot of things, it has a lot of facets. But the essence of this diamond is the same, no matter how many facets or how few facets you have. Yeah, the the essence of the diamond that is the chitta. Yeah. It's okay, not. It's not so easy to understand. Yeah, because uh, I I try to to practice a lot, and not only uh, just uh, seeing meditation, forming meditation, but because I have to work with people. Uh, I try to 
what I, I, I call it safety in, in the situation of awareness, try to be really mindful of what I'm doing, what I'm saying, what other people are saying, what, how my mind reacts to what other people say. So is, is that a correct practice? Yes, but uh, that, is, that is okay. Yeah? But be more aware of why you're doing or why you're saying the things that you say. And that is, you get that, you, you, you find that out, you know, when you do the daily reflection. Yeah? Or when you suddenly stop, what, what am I doing and why am I doing it? Yeah? And then you don't do it because you, you don't remember why you want to do this or what you want to do. Yeah? It happens sometimes. Yeah? So the important thing is why are we doing or why we are saying or why, we, why are we thinking? Yeah? To understand that, yeah? And not to judge it, yeah? Just to understand it. Yeah? And to also to see the results of our action. Yeah? That is the important thing that the citta needs to see that it does harm to itself, yeah? By doing this, yeah? The mind understands it, yes, but the chitta still wants to do it, yeah? So, but if the chitta sees, you know, it burns its heart, yeah? Or it burns its fingers or it burns its body by doing this over and over again, it will let go of its own accord. We cannot make the chitta let go of its attachment, yeah? But we can show the chitta that what it is doing, you know, is hurtful, yeah? Or is unwholesome, yeah? That's why I sometimes say, you know, when about the practice, we open our heart, you know, we show the chitta, you see it, yeah? And the chitta, you know, wants to be blind, you know, because it is, you know, still, you know, under the spell of avicca and the kilesas, yeah? It doesn't want to see it. So we have to show it and show it and show it until the chitta really sees, yeah? That is harmful, this is unwholesome, yeah? And then, once the chitta really understands, yeah? that this is harmful and wholesome, it will let go of its own, yeah? Okay? Okay. Thank you very much, Francis. Ignacio, can you go next? Good morning, Ajahn. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. A, a question, if I, if I wanted to practice the sati again, like Carlos was saying on the on my daily activities interaction with other people. So when I when I listen to the people, I try to maintain mindfulness and the breathing. Um, and I try to man, maintain the knowing of the breathing. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't feel like I, sometimes I don't have the confidence. Uh, I feel like I'm missing out on the on the conversation with the other person or uh -huh. if it's not referring to me. So that's the part that I'm not able to, I don't have much confidence on that. Yes, that is quite normal. Yeah? I, I didn't have very much confidence on the sati as well, you know, when I started doing it. But the more you practice it, yeah, and the more you, you don't put too much attention, you know, what other people are saying, you know, or, you know, missing the conversation, Maybe the conversation is completely, most of the, our conversation we have, you know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I mean, it's completely useless, you know, it's just wasting time, yeah? <clears throat> yeah? So, through practicing, yeah, this is, this is the correct way, I mean, that you say, yeah? I mean, you stay with the breath, yeah? and you just listen, you to try to concentrate, or sometimes concentrate on the heart, yeah, mm. on, on the chitta, yeah, and listen, yeah, and over the time your confidence will grow. And then once the confidence is, is strong enough, I mean, it is not interested in anything anymore. Because, yeah, the confidence, because your practice shows you that you actually understand on a very different level what the conversation is about. Yeah? And then you see that most or 90% of the conversation that, you know, people have, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, wasting time. Yeah? Just, you know, I mean, being afraid, you know, and so they need to talk to to somebody, you know, or doing this or doing that, you know, just because they don't know what to do with their time. Yeah. You understand? Understood. Thank you, John. Okay, another question? No, uh, anyone? 
Let's push this last. Hello, Netherlands. Hi, <laughs> I hope you're fine. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm I'm much better. Yeah, I'm in the rainy season, you know, stopped. You know, I mean, it's always it's the most difficult time for me for my body. You know, now it is lightening up. The weather is lightening up, so I feel much better. Okay. Good to you. Um, I had a few questions. My first question was, it's uh, getting colder here as well, and that brings having a cold as well. Um, and when I practice um, on breathing and my nose is stuck, then I can breathe through my nose and then I get um, annoyed and I, I'm not really sure what to do when I can't have a focus uh -huh. point around my nose. And then use the Buddha. Buddha, 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 Buddha. Yeah? Okay, so just change. Yeah. yeah, just change the object. It is not important what object we concentrate on. It's important that we know, yeah, we concentrate on one object and we know about this object. Yeah? Okay. <clears throat> second question. Um, second question was, um, well, I'm, I'm still having trouble sometimes with motivating myself to practice. So I have found um, like a group that practice again. And um, I think this one works well for me because they sit for quite a long time and it really motivates me to push through a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but they also do walking meditation, but they use a different method, which I have heard um, quite often about having the attention around the feet and you know the movement of the feet. Yeah. And I was wondering if you um, can explain that for me or if you suggest with practicing that as well, or just stay with the Buddha? Stay with the Buddha, but, yeah, I mean, the sati, or this awareness, is with the whole body, yeah? Then just stay, you know, with the awareness of the whole body, yeah? Stay with the Buddha, but know the whole body movement, yeah? I mean, you will know it, I mean, it is, it, it is impossible not to know, yeah? yeah? I mean, when you stay with the Buddha, or when you stay with the breath at the same time and do walking meditation, yeah? Let the body walk, yeah? <clears throat> and be aware of the walking. Yeah? And the more you concentrate on the, the more you concentrate on the Buddha or breath, the more you become aware. It is, it is Im impossible not to be aware of the movement of the body. Yeah? So don't, don't concentrate on the feet, you know, just stay with the Buddha, yeah? I mean, you can do it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with concentrating on the feet, you know, but it, yeah, it, it is not the same thing. Because the feet are a moving object, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, and the Buddha is stable, it is one point, yeah? And the breath is one point, you know, we focus our attention around the note, yeah? And with the Buddha we focus our attention on the Buddha, yeah? So this is not moving, it, it will get us, you know, sooner or later it get, will get us to one-pointedness, yeah? And one-pointedness is, you know, when everything disappears. Yeah. Okay? But try it out, yeah? I mean, don't, don't be so, you know, yeah? I mean, I tried out everything, yeah? I mean, when, when, I was, when I was starting meditation, I was trying out everything, and I said, oh, this doesn't have any effect, this doesn't have any effect, or this, this is not really helping me, yeah? <clears throat> so, see what the others are doing, yeah? I mean, when, when I was in England, you know, I mean, there, there were so many, I was staying in a meditation center for four or five months, yeah? And every week another teacher came and every, every you know, he, t he taught something different. I just listened, you know, and, and I said, okay, let's try it out, what he says, you know, and yeah? if it is useful, then take it on. If it's not useful, you know, forget about it. Okay. Yeah, I did that. I did that, but then it just makes me more confused, and I don't get anywhere because I just switch and switch and switch often. So ah. then I just stay with what you say. <laughs> no, no. Then then stay with the Buddha. You know, if you switch too often, right? the switching because is not I good. Have a question about it because I started off actually with um, with a um, 
I'm a good monk, I think, in, in Bangkok. Close to Bangkok, and he taught me about the movement of the hand. Yeah. Which, for me at the beginning, actually quite well to, to calm down. Yeah. But that has also had to do with the movement, and movement of feet or movement of, of yeah. the hand. Um, but I never hear you talk about uh, using some kind of movement as a meditation object. So I was just wondering why is it that you don't um, recommend those kind of things? Because it's moving. Yeah. I mean, Mahasya Sayada, the, the, the whole Sayada tradition, you know, that they, they focus on the stomach. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, of the, the uh, uh, what is it? Abdomen going up and down, yeah? That's the movement, yeah? I mean, it is easier to focus on a movement than to focus, you know, on a single point, yeah? Why I don't, why I don't encourage it so that people, you know, will have the ability sooner or later, once their concentration gets fixed and more fixed, yeah, more focused, yeah, to get into one-pointedness, yeah? You know, we, we, are, we, we, we are in a duality, yeah? Yeah? Subject and object, yeah? And we want to get to one point where subject and object, you know, merges into one thing, yeah? Into one point, yeah? That's why we stay with one point. And what is then the result of, or why do uh, people... Um, it's easier. Teach moving, it's easier. But, can, but is that is the result then for concentration? So practice yeah, it concentration is. It is it is easier for concentration because you have something moving and that is it is easier to concentrate on that yeah. okay so it's just for concentration but not for one pointedness no, so get no. That. no. Okay. it's for it's for developing con concentration it's not even for developing the sati yeah okay then i understand thank you um another thing is i am i am pregnant and um, I just had a question about what effect does my action, good or bad, or practicing meditation have on a baby? It will have a good effect. I mean, of course, bad actions will have a bad effect on the baby because it feels, you know, I mean, it's connected with you. <clears throat> good action will have a good effect on it. Yeah? So, I mean, the more you meditate, you know, the calmer the, the, the baby yeah, becomes, yeah? And maybe, you know, it wants to, yeah, maybe it wants to get out when it comes out of the womb, you know, it wants to meditate as well. <laughs> that would be good, yeah? <laughs> that would be good, yeah? It would be good for the baby and it would be good for the you, yeah? Well, but it depends on, you know, it depends on the chitta, you know, that, that, uh, in, is in is in this new body. How how months how many months are you? Three, four? Yeah, just two, not much yet. Two. Yeah, I think after three months after three months, you know, I mean ah, it is very it is very very difficult. You know, you will see, you know, if the if the baby moves, you know, I mean then it is active, the chitta is in there. Yeah. If the baby doesn't move, you know, it just grows, you know. And sometimes, you know, the chitta, you know, I mean, it made a reservation for your baby, yeah? yeah? Sometimes it goes in, you know, very quickly, you know, goes in, you know, with three months, you know, and sometimes it go, goes only, you know, when, when it is seven or eight months, yeah? Because, it, you know, it has so much time, you know, it made a reservation, you know, and yeah, once in a while it goes in, you know, and then it goes out again, you know, because it's boring, you know, to stay in the stomach for such a long time, you know, without any, any excitement going on, yeah. So that depends on the chitta, you know, yeah. If the chitta is developed, you know, it, it will come out, come into the baby, you know, yeah, into the body, yeah. Because the body and the chitta are two different things, will come in the body later, you know, if it, <clears throat> if it is not developed, you know, it comes in, into the body very quickly, yeah. Okay? But it, your, your action, of course, will affect that, yeah? So. Ah, why did you do that to yourself, huh? <laughs> I knew you would say that. <laughs> I mean that... 
I mean, it ruins, it will ruin, you know, your life of practice, you know, it, it will really, you know, because when it comes out, it, it needs so much attention, you know, that you, you're so tired, you know, that you can't even meditate. Even now, if it is difficult to meditate because you don't have the stamina, you don't, eh, you don't have this, this motivation. Eh? I mean, my motivation for practicing is when I was lazy and didn't want to practice, then I asked myself, do you want to be born again? Want to go through all this, you know? And then I recall, you know, my my first years of my life, you know, until I was, you know, 17, 18, yeah? And then I said, no way. Okay, what do you do? Practice. Yeah. And whenever I was not motivated, you know, I really recalled, you know, every, every part of my first 18 years of my life, or, you know, very difficult times, yeah? In my first eight, 18 years were very difficult times, yeah, so I mean, I just ask myself, you want to be born again? No? Okay, then practice! <laughs> if, if you don't care about be born again, you know, okay, go ahead and do whatever you want. Okay? Okay. Thank you, that's it for now. Who wants to go next? I think if, if there are no questions. Yeah, read okay. the one from the chat. Maybe. Okay. I think I read, I read the English ones first, then. Mm. There, are, there are two German questions. Yeah, he can read it. Yeah. Okay, so I'll go to the English ones first. Mm. Um, dear Ajahn, in Asuba practice, do we see our 32 parts of body as anicca, dukkha, anatta, or is it the mental reputation of the body, such as leg, 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 with leg as the mental image? Thank you. In the beginning, <clears throat> In the beginning of a, a super practice, yeah, what, what we can do is, you know, we can take an anatomical atlas, you know, and look at the pictures of certain parts of the body, and then, yeah, we we stare at them, you know, until it, you know, I mean, it fills up, you know, our inner eye, yeah, and then we close our eyes and then try to stay, you know, focus like we focus on the Buddha, then we focus on this image, yeah, <clears throat> to get an idea. So, what was the question? <laughs> if you should focus on Anicca Anatta Dukkha already? Or if you should I mean, Anicca Anatta Dukkha, I, I mean, with the body investigation, of course, yeah, I mean, you, you can think about, you know, the first, the first things, you know, you can think about Anicca, you know, you're born, you get older, you will die, yeah? This is Anicca, yeah? Mm. Or impermanent, yeah? Nothing stays on, yeah? I mean, when you're 18, then you're 18, and you're 19, and not 17, yeah? So, <clears throat> and the body grows older, it gets sick, you know, it gets older, and then it dies, yeah? Yes. This is, but this is not a super practice, yeah? Anicca, anatta, yeah? It's not a super practice. A super practice is seeing the loathsomeness of the body. So, <clears throat> taking, taking a, you know, taking a shaft, sharp knife, you know, or scal scalpel, yeah, and then, and then opening, you know, opening the, <coughs> the skin, you know, and seeing what is underneath, and then taking the flesh off, you know, seeing all this mess, you know, taking more off and more off and more off and more off, until there's only the bones left, yeah, to see it, yeah. <coughs> that is a super practice. Anicca Anatta Dukkha is, you know, is, is, is a practice, you know, when you think about your life, yeah, when you think about being born or, be, or die, you know, or getting sick, you know, things like that, yeah. It's useful, yeah. I mean, but that is the first part, yeah. And then the second part of the, of, the, of the practice of investigation of the body is tearing out the chitta from the body. I mean, getting out of the car or getting out of the body, seeing that the body is, yeah, is the body and the chitta is the chitta. Yeah? And then you start, you know, then you start with the asupa practice. And the asupa practice, you know, I mean, <clears throat> specifically sees the loathsomeness of the body. To see it, you know, to, to see the loathsomeness of the body, you know, 
Because with the low samna, seeing the low samnas of the body, you know, within the body, yeah, I mean, our attachment for the body is, you know, is in the form of greed and hatred. Yeah? So once we, once we understand you know, the, nat- the true nature of the body, neither is the body beautiful. We think, you know, as long as it is skin on, you know, and sometimes, you know, not even skin on, you know, the second skin that we call cloth, yeah, I mean, we find it beautiful, yeah. Or when we have nice hairs, you know, we find it beautiful, yeah. And other parts of the body, you know, the shit that comes out, we, we find it disgusting, yeah. When we open up the body, we find it disgusting. Yeah? So, you see that the hate and the, and the greed, yeah, the greed for the, yeah, for the food, you know, for instance, for a nice food, yeah. I mean, the greed for the food, you know, has something to do with the body, you know. Once, once we eat it, once we put it in the mouth, then try to spit it out and look at it. You know, do you want to eat it again? No. Whatever, whatever gets in touch with the body, yeah, I mean, gets disgusting, yeah. I mean, the food still tastes nice, you know, you spit it out in your hand and you don't want to eat it, yeah? I mean, you can, you don't have to do it with food, you know, just, just use your spittle and spit it in the hand, you know, after five minutes, you, you don't want to lick it up again because it stinks. Whatever gets in touch with the body stinks, yeah? I mean, why do we have to wash our body, yeah? Because it stinks. All the smell that comes from inside, you know, goes out, yeah? <clears throat> and this is this is a super practice, yeah, to see that. Yeah? Okay. So it's, I think the, the question is answered. Next question. Yeah. Uh, next question. Um, I am afraid to do meditation at night as I feel something bad will happen or some evil evil force will attack me. Or I will have bad visions. How do I overcome this fear? The fear. Yeah? See, the fear is anicca, anatta, dukkha. Yeah? There is fear. Yeah? I mean, whatever is happening, you know, I mean, when you concentrate on your putta, when you concentrate on your breath, yeah? I mean, you concentrate on the breath and, yeah, and there is no fear. When there is no thoughts, there is no fear. Huh? When there is no memories coming up, there is no fear. Yeah? So, replace the thoughts and replace the memories with, with Buddha or with, with the attention on the breath. Yeah? Yeah, very easy. Yeah. Uh, next uh, very easy said and very difficult to do. Okay, next. Yeah, this is the last question. If I apply recollection of death for any other person to reduce attachment or lust, is that bad? I don't mean any harm to the persons or wish for their death, only using them as a tool. That's okay. I mean, if you don't wish them to be to die, you know, I mean, it's fine, yeah? I mean, you can, especially for a super practice, I mean, you can tear, tear, tear open, you know, another body if you don't like your body, you know, you tear up another body and look at it, you know, I mean, it's, it's pretty similar to the same, yeah? Always remind yourself, you know, my body just looks like that. Oh, you know, I mean, at the moment, you know, there are so many pictures, you know, of torn up bodies, you know, from the war in Israel and from the war in Ukraine. I mean, look at them and see, you know, this is how my body looks, you know. Huh? When it is torn up, oh, torn open, you know, when it is made open, yeah. Look at these images, but be aware, yeah. <clears throat> Not just look, you know, and, and, and get a horror, you know, that, that, that is not the way, you know, to do a super. You now look at these images and, and always reflect, yeah, this is, this is how my body looks, yeah, when it is, you know, when it is running over a mine, you know, and then it's, yeah, and so many parts, are, you know, are, are torn apart, yeah. <clears throat> now I forgot the question, what, what was it? It's already answered. Huh? It's already answered. It's already answered. answered, okay. So now the German questions. <coughs> mm, two questions, but I'm going to ask them one by one. Im Ukraine-Krieg gab es relativ friedliche Demonstrationen. Die extreme Gewalt der aktuellen Demonstrationen zum Nahostkonflikt ist eine neue Dimension und macht mir Angst. Warum ist der Hass im Nahostkonflikt so viel größer als im Ukraine-Krieg? Wie kann ich mit der Angst umgehen? 
das habe ich im Grunde genommen gerade eben auf Englisch beantwortet, wie man mit, ja, warum, warum das so ist, das kann ich dir nicht beantworten. Warum, ja, aber ich glaube nicht, dass das friedlich war im Ukraine-Krieg. Ne? Ja, der Hass war gegen, gegenüber, in Deutschland jedenfalls, ne, war gegenüber den Russen. Alles, was russisch war, wurde gehasst, ne? wurde verbannt, wurde, wurde verboten. Ne? Und Israel ist ein bisschen, der, der israel-palästinensische Krieg ist ein bisschen anders. Ne? Es gibt viele Leute, ne? Israel ist ein Apartheidstaat. Ne? Und ein Apartheidstaat, so wie South Africa, ne? Südafrika, früher wurde ja von den westlichen Staaten unterstützt, die Apartheid. Ja? Aber viele, viele der anderen Staaten, wie zum Beispiel Russland und China, haben die Apartheid eben nicht unterstützt. Und äh, Palästina, ne? die Palästinenser, die finden große Unterstützung in Europa. Deswegen ist wahrscheinlich, das ist mein, meine Einschätzung, nicht dass, nicht, dass das die Wahrheit ist, ne? meine Einschätzung, deswegen sind die Gemüter etwas heißer ne? bei diesem Krieg. Was, was wollt ihr noch wissen? Wie er mit der Angst umgehen kann. Vielleicht wir mit der, auf ja, ich habe es auf Englisch gesagt. Ne? Wenn, wenn du dich hinsetzt und meditierst und bei dem Buddha bleibst oder beim Atem bleibst ne? und jeden, jeden Gedanken, ne, der hochkommt oder jede Erinnerung, die hochkommt, mit dem Buddha ersetzt, ne? dann kann keine Angst entstehen. Angst entsteht durch Denken, Angst entsteht durch Erinnerungen hervorrufen. Ne? Wenn du keine Erinnerungen hast und keine Gedanken hast, dann ist da auch keine Angst. Ne? Da ist aber auch keine, keine Zukunft und keine Vergangenheit. Ne? Da ist einfach nur das pure, wahre Sein. Ne? Und deswegen fühlen wir uns so wohl da drin. Ne? Das ist auch kein Alleinsein. Ne? Nichts. Okay, nächste Frage. Seit 2019 habe ich großes Unbehagen. Erst Corona, dann der Ukraine-Krieg und nun der Nahostkonflikt. Sind das alles kleine Brände, die sich, zu, die sich bald zu einem großen Flächenrand entwickeln? Ja. Die Antwort ist sehr einfach. <lacht> es, wird, es wird früher oder später knallen. Ja? Und je mehr kleine Flächenbrände in der Welt sind, ne? und sie schüren, ne? die, 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 vor allem die USA, ne? aber auch die westlichen, die NATO-Staaten, die schüren ja ständig diese Brände. Ne? <lacht> ja? Und je mehr Brände es gibt, umso, umso größer ist die, die, die Wahrscheinlichkeit, dass da... Ne? Oder nicht nur die Wahrscheinlichkeit, sondern es wird irgendwann mal explodieren zum dritten Weltkrieg. Okay? Das war alles? Okay, I'm finished with Just German. What? Just some email questions, but if there's more soon, then we can do some. Yeah, I mean, maybe there are some, some questions uh, from the audience, or maybe some more chat questions, yeah? From your side? Yeah, anyone else with questions? You can type in the chat. Yeah, if you don't want to ask it directly. Anyone? Asking question, huh? being able to formulate a question, yeah, huh? is the ability, you know, to gain wisdom. If you don't ask question, you will stay stupid. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, for this question from Kenyans. Yeah, go ahead. I don't can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah. Where are you from? So I'd like to. Where are you from? Uh, I'm, in Sw I'm in Switzerland at the moment. Oh. Well, originally from Scotland. Ah, oh, Scotland. Aberdeen. Aberdeen. Glasgow. Glasgow. <laughs> oh. Okay. Ich wohne seit länger in der Schweiz. Ja, er kann schon ein bisschen Schweizerdeutsch. Hast du die Fragen auf Deutsch verstanden? Ja, klar, ja. Okay, ja, dann bist du aber schon lange da in der Schweiz. Okay, ja, fünf, what, what is your question? 15 Jahre schon. Um, ja. So, my question is, um, whenever I go to, the, to go and stay in a monastery to practice for a while, Sometimes, not always, but sometimes I find maybe after seven days, ten days, I'm getting calm, getting quite calm. And then suddenly something 
uh, not so pleasant can come up. It could be a flashback of something that really happened or just an image of, of something that could be very, very strong. Mm-hmm. Um, and my question is how to, how to deal with that in the practice situation when I'm practicing full time in the monastery. Accept it. Just see it, yeah? Accept it. Don't push it away. Don't try to get rid of it. Huh? Don't, don't try, you know, these things shouldn't happen, yeah? Look at it and then put it away, put your attention back to the Buddha or back to the breath. Yeah? When it comes again, you just look at it and then you put your attention back to the breath. Yeah? Until, yeah? <clears throat> some some of these things or most of these things, yeah. I mean, they are all flashbacks, yeah. I mean, they are most of those flashbacks from previous lives, you know. Sometimes, yeah, or you know, from a situation that we don't remember in our life. Yeah? So you have to accept this, yeah, because we all pushed it away in our heart, yeah. And once the heart becomes calm, all these things will come up naturally, yeah. And be careful, yeah, and and be confident, yeah. And everybody should be confident. The things. Yeah, that can that come up at the time of our meditation. We can deal with it in a very wholesome manner. There is nothing coming up that is too difficult to deal with it, because I mean the chitta has metta with us. Yeah, so it only brings up the things that we can deal with it in a wholesome manner. Yeah, if we push it away, you know, I mean this is not 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 the right thing. Yeah. I don't want to see it, I don't want to hear it, I don't want to be remembered of it. No, let's see, you know, and you, and there might be emotions coming with it, you know, accept the emotions, yeah. Focus on these emotions, you know, let it, you know, let it stay in the whole body, you know, and after, you know, when, when you stay with the Buddha or when you stay with the breath, I mean, it will quickly disappear. Mm-hmm. That is the way how to deal with these things, yeah. I mean, it, it took me two years, you know, I mean, for the first two years, you know, so many things were coming up, you know. I mean, just accepted it, you know, and, and some of it, you know, some of it was really strong, you know, when, when we pushed something really hard away, <clears throat> pushed it away very, very hard, yeah. Then it comes up, I mean, it might come up for two or three months, you know, and always the same thing, yeah. But if you look at it, accept it, yeah, and then after two or three months, yeah, we see what caused it, yeah, and then we can remove that what caused it, and then once we remove that what caused it, yeah, maybe wrong view, maybe, you know, maybe conceit, maybe arrogance, or whatever is behind that, yeah, then it doesn't come again. That's how we can clean out our chitta, yeah, just like you clean out your room, you know, I mean, in Switzerland, you know, I mean, you really... (laughs) You make it very clean, you know, every dust, you know, every dust pixel, yeah. But in the beginning, you know, we have to clean out our heart. It is full of very coarse things, yeah. So we accept it and we just throw it out, yeah. Until, you know, comes the fine cleaning, yeah. Okay? Thank you, Tanajan. That's very clear. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? We still have one more question, you know, from, from, yeah. from YouTube. Think, yeah. Yeah? Hector, you want to ask the question? Yeah. Okay. Where is he from? Hector, you are... I can't hear you. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, Ukraine. Yes, hello. <laughs> I'm back in America now, actually. I moved Good. back. Okay. So I'm, uh, I'm happy. Uh, but it's very early in the morning, so I'm trying yes. hard. <laughs> well, what uh, part? East or West Coast? The Midwest, actually, in the middle. In the middle? By, by St. Louis. Oh, St. Louis. Ah, okay. okay. Yes, yes. Very quiet, very nice country. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, something that has been coming up more now, um, when I enter in Samadhi, uh, and, you know, there's more active forms, more subtle forms, um, but there seems to be a common theme that I'm in, and, uh, it's that, you know, the Samadhi makes the mind sharp and it makes the mind happy, but there is a, 
background uh, Panya Arasati that is aware that the Samadhi itself is, um, I, this is not the right word, but I am almost sedating myself. As if, I mean, it's, it's very clear, the mind is malleable, it's, you know, there's a lot of sati, but there's this deep down knowing that samadhi is not panya. That samadhi is, you know, it's, it's almost like I'm on a drug. It, it's a wholesome drug, you know, and it's very useful and it can help bring you to various stages of enlightenment, but I know it's not panya. So there's even a part of me that doesn't like samadhi, even though it's very nice and beautiful, I don't like it. But, and sometimes this can even bring me into deeper samadhi because I'm not attached to the samadhi. So you're not drawn to it, which makes you unattached to it. But at the same time, it makes me, um, I, I feel like this is something I shouldn't focus on too much and I should wait until isn't that something that an anagami needs to work on to not be attached to samadhi itself? And maybe I shouldn't really worry about that, but it keeps coming up. So you, you, be, you shouldn't means... be, you should not be worried about it. Yeah. As long. Yeah. yeah? I mean, go into samadhi. You need, yeah. I mean, you, you go to sleep, you know, you eat food, you know, you go to sleep every day. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how many hours, six hours or eight hours. Yeah. So rest, yeah, rest the mind, you know, rest the mind for a few hours in Samadhi and then, you know, just one hour, do investigation. Do investigation of the body, yeah, do investigation, you know, whatever you want, yeah. But this is, is that what is coming up, yeah, I mean, it's the Kilesas, you know, who don't want you to go into deeper Samadhi, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not the wisdom that comes up and says samadhi, no. Yeah? I mean, sila, samadhi, panya. Yeah? So, I mean, it is useful. Yeah? And if it comes up in samadhi, you know, it's a kilesas disturbing you, trying you not to get too deep. Because once, once you get deeper, yeah, I mean, the kilesas have no more power over you. They cannot say these things. Yeah? I mean, even this knowingness doesn't come up in samadhi. Mm. Yeah, it's a background thinking, you know, and a lot of people, you know, when they think, you know, they are in samadhi, they are not aware of the background thinking that still goes on, yeah, so they have to quiet that down as well, yeah, so quiet that mm. down, be more concentrated, you know, be more concentrated on your object, or be it the Buddha, or be it the breath, yeah, <clears throat> until that, that is complete, it is completely quiet, yeah. Mm. So, so that's probably keeping me from getting closer to Abhana Samadhi. Yes, is what you're certainly. Doing. Yeah, it cannot. It, it is absolutely disturbing. Yeah? yeah, and they don't want you to go into Abhana Samadhi, the Kilesas, because okay. then they are finished for a while. Yeah, right. They they prefer investigation because then they can fight with you when you're doing the investigation. Yes, yeah. but if you don't have enough sati, you know your investigation. Yeah. I mean, they love to do that, you know, they love to fight with you on a, on a basis, you know, where, where, where it is not useful. Mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Because if you fight on a basis where, where it destroys them, I mean, they're afraid of that. They don't like to argue yes. with that, yeah? Yes. But, but the only thing that con confused me was that when I do see the the anicca, uh, mm -hmm. you know, anatta of the samadhi, it can, it sometimes does help get even deeper. So sometimes it's a useful tool, but sometimes it's the kalesas drawing me out of samadhi. No, that, that, that can be useful, you know, if you're too attached, you know, if you're too attached to these things, yeah, I mean, that, that is not, that is not helpful, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, anicca anatta can help you to get deeper, yeah, but normally, yeah, I mean, I, I can't remember, you know, I can't remember for myself, at least not now, right, that it came, ever came up, yeah. <clears throat> I yeah. just was, was interested, yeah. But, but I also, you know, I, I did a lot of panya, yeah. And I only, then in the beginning I did a lot of samadhi until I was co completely, you know, I mean, yeah, away, you know, for, for hours or for days, you know, until I started, you know, af only after a few years, you know, I started to do panya, yeah. And then I was much more interested in Panya, and only when I was exhausted I was doing Samadhi. 
So I mean, <clears throat> if you really do samadhi, you know, if you really get into upachara or apana samadhi, I mean, it's, there's no fault, yeah? I mean, think about my, my venerable teacher, you know? I mean, Lumpu Man, you know? <clears throat> Lumpur Man, one of, one of the founders of the forest tradition, yeah? I mean, he let Lungta Mahabua sit in Samadhi for five years, yeah? And it didn't work, you know? I mean, he worked, you know, day and night, you know, in Samadhi, you know? <clears throat> and after five years, Lumpur Man came and said, okay, now it's enough, yeah? Okay, develop wisdom, yeah? Because then, your sati is so strong, whatever you look at it, you'll write tears through it, yeah? So, I mean, it's not a problem, you know, to develop samadhi. There, there is no harm in to overdevelop samadhi, yeah? Because once you go then into investigation, the longer you have to develop it, the stronger the chitta is, you know, and the, the, the better it can pierce through, yeah? Okay? That, what you just said resonated immediately, so I think that, yes, that, that was very good. Thank you so much. Okay, so Sunny. Yeah, yep. long ago, there's actually a question from the chat. Okay. Yeah, so I try reading it. So I think it's a question on the meditation of using Buddha. Uh, so long ago mentions to repeat Buddha, but another monk mentions to use both with in breath and do without breath. Mm. Uh, is there any difference? And uh, Longpo repeats Bundo with speed. Is that the best approach? I think to, to repeat Bundo quickly, is that the best approach? There is no best approach. Yeah, it depends on the... It depends on the... <coughs> what, is, what is the opposite of calm? Yeah. It, it depends on the turbulence of your chitta. When the chitta is very, very agitated, yeah? then you can use put with breathing in and do with breathing out, yeah? Because then you have two grudges to hold on to, yeah? Once the chitta becomes calm, then you use just one grudge, you know, whatever you, you used to train on to, yeah? Be it the Buddha or be it the breath, it doesn't really matter. Hmm? <clears throat> there, were, there was another part, I, I forgot about it. Yeah, to, to repeat Buddha quickly, is that the best thing? I mean, no, the, as I said, that it's, there is no best approach. It is the approach that helps you in the situation, yeah? If the chitta is very agitated, you know, the, uh, and, and thinks a lot, you know, use putu, 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 very fast, yeah? But if the chitta is calm, yeah, and if you concentrate more on the knowing of the putu, you know, I mean, <clears throat> then the putu gets slower and gets deeper. It's the same with the breath. <clears throat> When the chitta is agitated, the breath is rough, you know, and very short, yeah. And when, once you once you stay with the breath, you know, it becomes calm. You have to go with the flow, yeah. I mean, meditation is not forcing something, you know. <clears throat> I, I, I mentioned it, you know, in, in my early talks, you know. I mean, it is <clears throat> it's riding a horse, yeah. As long as the horse goes in the right direction, go with the flow, yeah. Once you know you see the horse goes out, you know, I mean, then then strangle it back, yeah until it goes again, and then go with the flow, go with the right, yeah? Otherwise, another horse, you know, will, will kick you off, yeah? If you strangle it too much, yeah? And that is the same with our meditation. If we, if we push too much, you know, I mean, we just get headache, you know, and <clears throat> and other things will happen, you know, we get uh, uh, disheartened, you know, by our practice, yeah? Okay? So I think that's answered then. Thank you, Uncle. I think, yeah, that's all the questions. Yeah, do you have one more question, or? Mm, two. Two. Okay, let's finish up, you know, because... Yeah, yeah no, no, I'll read the two questions. <coughs> um, the first uh, one that makes sense. Uh, hello, Tanajan. Is the preview of Nibbana, a.k.a. Appana Samadhi, the same as the experience of Nibbana that makes one a scream emperor? It's similar. It's not this, it's not exactly the same, yeah. Because if if it would be the same, yeah, <coughs> then then you would enter the stream. But it is very very you know I mean it's hardly you know to, hardly to distinguish, but it is it goes much deeper, yeah. 
I mean, the experience of Apana Samadhi, you know, is a preview of Nibbana. I mean, and Nibbana is just like we know, you know, I mean, when we see a preview of a movie, it's not the movie itself, yeah? It's just a preview, you know? <clears throat> So, I mean, the Nibbana, the, 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 what is it, the path moment? Is it the path? Yeah, it's the path moment, yeah? That is very, very deep. I mean, it goes whoosh in, yeah? And then it whoosh out, you know, I mean, it, it just takes seconds, yeah? <clears throat> okay, so next question. This is a little bit convoluted, and we tried to clarify, but it's still confusing, so I'm just going to ask. Maybe Tanajan understands. Uh, uh, I had meditated 10 years ago for four hours each day. And now the problem is that I have this knowing that I will, bo will be going to hell. If I do some antisocial thing, then yeah. I and my parents will be saved from going to hell. And then we ask them to clarify why they think that, and the answer is this feeling that they will be going to hell comes, which tells me this. This feeling is coming for a very long time now. I had done meditation before, but I but while I had been meditating, I was also having sex with a girl with whom I broke up later. Can meditation help? <laughs> um, it, it, is, it is confusing, but uh, <coughs> He thinks, he thinks about these things, you know, he shouldn't think about this, you know, I mean, yes, a lot of people are going to hell, yeah? I mean, then, then sit down and quietly reflect about your life, yeah? I mean, where, where have you gone wrong, you know? <clears throat> I, I did it, you know, I did it with all the sins that I have done, you know, up until probably 30 years, you know, and then I added up all these hells, you know, so I, I had about 30, 30, 30 or 40 or 50 years in hell, you know, I said, okay, you know, I mean, you've done it, you cannot, you cannot correct it, I, I will just go 50 years to hell, you know, and then I come back, yeah. <clears throat> we have done something bad, you know, we receive it, yeah. But if we cannot accept that, that is a problem, yeah. We have to accept it, you know, okay, we've done something, you know, for it, we might go to hell. Sometimes we don't have to go to hell, we experience the results in the human realm, yeah. Or, or in the ghost realm, or, or, or in the animal realm, you know, whatever it is, yeah? So, and it is the same thing, you know, it is this fear, it is this imagination, you know, that goes wild, yeah? I mean, whatever he says about his parents, the, the best thing to help your parents is, you know, to, to share the merit of your practice with your parents. Yeah? And share the matter, you know, with your parents. That is the only thing that can help them, yeah? <clears throat> If you are good in meditation, I mean, you can pull out your, your father or your mother out from hell, you know, but uh, <clears throat> by, by giving them, you know, <clears throat> giving them a lot of metta, you know, and sharing, sharing with the practice, you know. So, I mean, the, the problem, you know, here, you know, I mean, for the whole hour is this fear, yeah? I mean, fear is coming through thoughts and through imaginations and through memories, yeah? I mean, if you, yeah? He should practice, you know, I mean, he, he practiced 10 years ago, yeah? I mean, what did you do, you know, in this last last 10 years, eh? I mean, if you break up with a girl or if you get divorced, it is not against the precepts, yeah? But if you have a girl, you know, and have another girl, you know, or three girls beside you, you know, that is breaking the precept, no matter if you're married or not married, yeah? I mean, being faithful in one's relationship, you know, whatever you call it, yeah? That is, as long as you have this relationship, you have to be faithful. Yeah? If you're not, you know, then, of course, you know, this, this is a path to hell. Especially sexual misconduct is a path to hell. Yeah? <clears throat> Killing, you know, is a path to hell. I mean, there's no, there's no, <clears throat> there's no way around it, yeah? And heavy robbery is also the path to hell. Yeah? I think, I hope he understands, you know, the answer, yeah? But that's all what I can say. That, that was the... Okay. So, finished? Yeah? Hope everybody is fine. Practice, practice, practice. You have a question? So, <clears throat> practice, yeah? Practice sati sati, yeah? And, and do your do your daily daily reflection, yeah? Huh? Every day, yeah? As, as good as well, yeah? As much as you can, yeah. If you don't remember, just skip over, yeah. And don't judge.
Don't say it's good or bad. Don't. The chitta knows it. Yeah? So just show the chitta. Open the chitta. You see it? You see what you did? No. I don't want to see it. Yeah? Until it sees it. Yeah? And then it lets go. So everybody has a nice night. Yeah? <clears throat> A nice morning, a nice day, you know, where, wherever you are. Switzerland is probably midday, you are. Yeah. Seven hours. Yeah, seven hours, midday, yeah. <coughs> Washington is about uh, just the morning, yeah. Just the sun coming up here, the sun has gone down. Okay? Yes, okay, it's next to Hong Kong. Thank you, Uncle. You're welcome. You never have any questions for me, once. Good. Now it's getting dark very soon. <laughs>